Here I am on the west side of the house on the north edge of the property. Notice the lone window on the west, the bathroom window. The large lone pecan tree in the front. Those three windows on the porch is where the picture window was. Apparently it was replaced with the three windows that are there now. The window on the left of the front door and porch is the dining room. The window to the right of the porch is the north bedroom. Please keep in mind that this video was taken 31 years after the events in the story, and it is quite obvious that no one lives there now. Try to imagine the house in good condition and the lawn well maintained. That storm door was not there in 1975. A screen door was. Here's the view from the front porch looking north in the direction of Yarnaby. I checked, no one was home at the time. Here's the kitchen, or what's left of it. The curtain's still up in the dining room, a dining table, and for some reason, a couch. Where the stove and refrigerator would have been, the utility room, and again, the house is in a dilapidated condition. Back to the dining room. Apparently things growing through the windows. The front door. Now looking into the living room. And try to imagine the picture window was one solid piece of glass where the three windows are now. And for some reason a toilet seat is in, on the floor. There was an exterior door to the right of the window, but now it's boarded up. And what looks like carpet now was not there in 1975. The floors were hardwood oak floors. That shelving was not there in 1975. Where the picture window would have been. Looking into the hallway and the bathroom beyond. The bathroom window where Duncan saw the image of a man wearing a fedora. The drywall on the ceiling has fallen down in places. This is the north bedroom, Joel and Lucy's bedroom. Curtains up. Clothes strewn about. Some furniture, a bed, are still there. But the closet is empty. Looking back down the short hallway into the south bedroom, Michael and Duncan's bedroom. If you look up, the ceiling drywall has fallen. And oddly, over the exact locations where Duncan's bed and Michael's bed were the night the alarm clock moved. All sorts of items thrown about. Clothes, glass, 
ceiling fans, box lids, cups, but the closet is empty. The window on the south wall. This window on the east wall looks out to the back patio and you can just see the top of the storm shelter beyond with debris piled up on top of it. Heading back down the short hallway and then something very odd. On the left side of the door jamb to the north bedroom door there is a mechanism for a padlock. On the outside of the door, as if to keep something inside the bedroom, that was not there in 1975. Heading back into the living room, space heater, where the back door was, the front door beyond, The dining room and back out to the front porch. the large open field north of the property. Looking back to the east, the road signs of the intersection of Beechers and Yarnaby Roads. Now that White House in the distance, just up Yarnaby Road is where the Hicks lived and where the lady at the courthouse in Durant grew up. Walking back toward the intersection, Zooming in on the sign. Looking east down Beecher's Road. Looking north up Yarnaby Road. The large open field north of the property. Now looking west down the dirt road that leads to the 40 acre field south of the farmhouse and looking back at the farmhouse from the intersection to the southwest. Zooming in where the picture window once was. And a clearer view of the Hicks house looking north 
at the south side of their house. Looking back up Beecher's Road, 